Okay. You know, I was thinking today, I was uploading, um, or re-sharing re re the roller cross video, because I've just got all the new roller cross heads in from America, um, and putting up some new stencils that I've got. And I thought, I don't think I've ever done a video on how I use stencils, which seems extraordinary, because they're my oldest tool, um, and they are probably still the one I use the most. Closely followed up by blocks now, I have to say, since Jamie introduced me to the wonder of a... Indian wooden printing blocks. Blocks are coming in a very, very, very close second. But I still think probably stencils um, are the thing I use most often um, and certainly the thing I started with. Um, they feature right at the beginning of book one, chapter one, or maybe chapter two, I can't remember. Anyway, it's the first, first thing I do. So I thought I'd just go through because I don't use stencils in the way that um, mixed media art journalists would use them. I'm using them in, in a much sort of larger, bigger way to make um, large scale materials. So I've got my stencils here and I've got tens, probably hundreds of stencils. I just collect them over the years. Um, I stock in the shop, um, Crofters Workshop, which come from America. Um, this is one of the Crafters Workshop ones. Um, they come in two sizes. Um, they come in a 12 by 12, which is a fabulously large stencil for £7.50. And a little, uh, and the 6 by 6s And they're really nice ones. They were the first stencils I stocked. But then I've added in um, Clarity Stamp, also a very good value, an English company. Um, and Barbara Gray there designed some fabulous stencils. And then I've added in a few others as I go along because I love them so much. So I've got some from Dinah Wakely, um, the Dilusions range. That's one of those. So is that. Um, and I've got some from um, Colour Snap, where I get the roller graph wheels from. I'm just trying to find one of those. That's one of the Colour Snap ones. Um, they're a little bit more, really, because they're coming a long way to me and I can't buy large volume. Um, and then I've also got some, just found these, these are Americana. Now I can feel these are a much thinner stencil, I think, um, than the others, but I'm gonna try them today and see how they work because I really like some of the designs. So, got some new ones, as you can see, they'll definitely get used because I like to try out the new ones. And I've got out just a few, just a few of my favorites. Heaven knows how many videos this could take. You don't have to stay for them all, but you'll be missing out on exciting things if you do. When I'm looking for stencils, the things I look for really are pattern. Um, if it's going to be a feature, by and large, I'm going to make it myself. Um, so if I want, and that's not 100% true because I have got stencils of fish um, and owls and birds and things like that, which I do enjoy using, but I will tend to break them down and use them as pattern. 90% of my collection are just patterns, various patterns um, that I'm going to use to make patterned materials. Um, there are also, and I have a few, some stencils that, you know, have very distinct, um, you can't see this because you can, I think, um, this one's called Bow. It's one of Dinah Wakely's stencils, and it's um, it's quite it's a pattern you could certainly use for a feature in a quilt or a piece of textile art. Um, I prefer to make my own, but that's completely that's completely up to you, and depends on really time you have available and your um, <laughs> your technical expertise with a stencil cutter. Right. So I think I could waffle on for ages, but I won't. You know me. It's cut to the chase. Never waffle. Um, I'm going to use. I've started mixing up. Not in pristine pots anymore. Um, but these new colours of paint, they're not available yet, but I'm hoping they will be in the next week or two. Um, I've got a few days. They would have been had the puppy not arrived, to be honest with you. But for those of you that um, that didn't have dogs, you'll know that having a puppy is like having a new baby. It's very 24 hours a day, unless you want your home completely destroyed. So, but these will be the new paints um, and I'm making them in much more, I'm trying to get this in front of the camera, much more muted subtle colours um, than the set of colour range coming at the moment. You know, so I'm making, and they're, of course, they're my favourite colours, um, muted reds, I've got a beautiful tealy turquoise, a lovely, um, I suppose that's almost a primary blue, but it's knocked back. Um, some lovely greens, some really, really pretty colours. Um, that's like a cranberry colour. So these will be coming up and I'm going to bottle them. I'll do them in 50 ml pots, which will be my starter size, which is a little bit bigger than the current set of colour pot, which is 45 ml. And then these will be my probably main stock one, which is a 100 ml pot. So that's over twice as big as the set of colour. And so I think it gives you a reasonable amount of paint for doing quite a lot of work with um, without having to spend a fortune and then I will do 200 and 250 mil pots the same as the set of colour range so I'm going to be using those today just so that we can see some of the colours I'm planning to make 
I've also got a little bit of set of colour with me. These are still um, the same paints I've always used, so the very opaque fabric paints. Um, and I'll also be using some Lumiere because I just love it. This is my favourite shimmer paint. It's a Jacquard product. It's not fully opaque, but the mica in it is going to allow it to stand up to over dyeing. Um, I'll explain over dyeing when we come to it, but it basically adds more colour over the top of the stencils. So let's get some paper. I've got a table here. It's not a huge table, these tables in the studio. I think they're about four by two foot, um, maybe four by two and a half foot. Um, and obviously they're adjustable height so you don't hurt your bag but you don't need a huge space i've got these covered in flip chart paper which gives me a nice absorbent surface to work on and protects the table um, so you could set yourself up like this at home and then i've just got another small table over to the side that's got my paints on i'm going to grab some paper i'm going to be printing on my usual papers these days so i've got layout paper um, which is a nice strong wet strength paper but still fine and I've got my lovely deli paper, um, which is American deli paper. It's a double full strap size um, and it will take wet dye. A lot of grease proof um, baking parchment papers and even deli papers won't take dye terribly well. This really does. So I've got those two papers and I've also got fabric um, if I want to use that. So let's just start. Let's try because I have to. Let's try. Let's try one of the new stencils. Where are they? Where did I put them? I can see one there, but I wanted to try. I know which one I want to try. Well, I knew I wanted to try it as soon as I took it out of the packet. This is good. We can spend a few hours while I just want well, a few hours. Ah, there we go. There we go. That one. This one is actually called Sugar Cubes, but it reminds me of either old dry stone walls or sort of pebble stones on the beach in flint walls, that sort of thing. So I'm going to try that one out. Um, and let's just pick a colour. So I've got paint trays here um, for my paint. I'm just making sure I'm in, in the camera. And let's pick a colour. I've got my sponge rollers and I'm going to pick, I'll just pick up the first one I pick, which is a sort of reddy brown colour. Got to think of names for, oh, my usual, got to think of names for all of these paints as well. And I think I'll have to do better than I've done with my dye colours because some of my dye colours, although I think they're really obvious, other people don't and they don't perhaps like them. So I would call this, what would call this, cranberry, cranberry brown, brownie red. Anyway, there it is. It's a delicious colour. So I'm going to start off with just that. Now, normally I would put grey and white straight on my palette to mix it, but I know with this, because this is already muted, I'm not going to need to. I will be adding white. But for the moment, I'm just going to start with the straight paint and put on a really nice dark layer. So let's see how this goes on. It's very deep. So I'm going, I'm using the roller through the stencil. I'm not using stencil brushes. I use, I have used them. Stenciled my house to death with them in the past. I knew that was going to be a really nice stencil and it certainly is. So I'm going to do that again. Now, while I've got this wet like this, you can also... Grab another sheet of paper, smooth it on, and get the negative print, which will also be very nice. So I'm getting sort of two for one. So let's do that again. I'm going to turn it so that it's going the other way. I don't, I like to break down the patterns on them. I think that's what I enjoy is the challenge of stopping them looking completely like they did when I started. If we put that there, if I had a brayer, if I had a brayer anywhere, all the brayers are out of sight. Oh no! <laughs> Brilliant. Brayer that down. Get some nice negative printing going on on here. And um, working like this, you build up materials so, so, so fast. I can remember working at the first year I did Festival of Quilts, which incidentally I'm not doing this year, but I will be on our textile stand. Um, but the first year I did Festival of Quilts, I can remember, um, I think it was this from what Van Gogh, standing watching for a bit and just saying, you know, I've never seen anybody whack down stencils like that. And it is whacking them down um, because I'm not looking in any shape or form for perfection or clear imagery. I'm looking to make myself beautiful patterned materials. So let's just fill this. That one's gorgeous. All those negatives. I'm absolutely loving that piece. That is just so um, organic to me. That's very organic. Um, this one's bolder. And remember, I could be doing this on fabric. And as I think you're probably picking up by now, I'm going to use these papers in exactly the same way that I would use fabric. So I will stitch into these and make my work from them. So I've got myself some nice, a nice first layer there. Now, 
I've got so many options with stencils. I can carry on with the same stencil over the top. So let's try that. So I'm going to start adding white in now. I've got here, I've got plain set of colour white. And I've also got, let's just put the lid on that one. I've also got a shimmer white from Lumiere, which I can add in if I want to add a bit of shimmer to the paint colours. So let's just knock that down a level. And let's put this over again. So I've positioned the stencil so it's in not quite the same place. Oh, it's sort of, that's like a raspberry sorbet now. So maybe we've got deep raspberry sorbet and raspberry sorbet there. Sorry, people have told me this in the videos. I move things so fast. Sorry, it's because that's how I work. This, I need to keep them still for longer and I will hold it up for the camera to you to see. But I've layered that over the first lot, offset it slightly. I'm going to do the same on here. Turn that over. And print that. And you can see, as I start to add layers in, it breaks down the imagery a bit and makes it so much, to me, so much more interesting to look at. Um, so let's go again. Let's just finish this piece on this layer. So I want to make sure I'm not going in the same spots. <laughs> the odd woof is because Stephen is puppy sitting outside while I do this, just to avoid a general level of destruction and bullying of poor Dixter going on. Poor Dixter is not an alpha dog. He never has been. He's a lovely chap. And we are struggling to keep him as having a major role in the family. But we're determined. We're determined as we don't abide by the laws of nature here. There's none of that. So uh, I decide who's top dog. Well, I'm top dog. Um, certainly as far as the dogs are concerned, because I feed them. Um, right. So we've now got two layers of imagery on there. I'm going to just print this off into the gaps on here. Oh gosh, I just think as I'm working, I'm thinking there are so many things I can show you with these. Right, so I've got, that's a really beautiful, I'll probably leave that one ready for over dye now, piece of negative printing. And this one is a gorgeous piece of positive printing. And you can see how well those would work together if you're a patchwork quilter. I'm sure you can see how you could make very good quilt patterns with those. So I could leave that like that, or I could go back over the top with another pattern. So because we can, let's go over the top with another pattern. So let's lighten the paint again, with more white. And I could go back straight back over with the same pattern yet again. There's still gaps I could fill there. But I'm going to, because I want to leave some gaps for the dye, I'm going to find a lighter pattern. And I have several stencils that I keep and like specifically because they give really nice, light, gentle patterns. That is one of them for sure. It's one of my very, very favourites at the moment, that one. Oh, and these ones, which are new ones from Crafters Workshop. Let me show you these. Oh, this will look good. This, <laughs> you can see I don't bother washing my stencils, only when they get completely clarted up and it takes a long time. This one is a bit actually, that's, uh, that's, that's the naughty students doing that. I can see Milo just piling away outside the window here, making me giggle. I keep seeing him going across the garden with his footy. He's, <laughs> he's in training out there. Of course, this is an opportunity for Dix to spend some quality time with his mummy on his own without the young pup around. So what does he do? Buggers off upstairs. I despair sometimes. You know, you, th you think you're doing the right thing, but they're pack animals really, aren't they? You can, only, you can only try. I've made that probably quite messy now because it was wet and sticky. So I'm just going to give that a good roller off on my drop cloth. Okay. So back over the top. Now this may not show too much at this stage, but it certainly will when I over dye because I'm using a colour that's a lot lighter. Okay. Can you, oh God, that is so beautiful. Can you see that on there? I wonder if you can. It is spectacular. I will print, when I play the video back, if it's not visible, I will print I will print, um, I will photograph and print a still of that because it looks spectacular. I'm just thinking as I'm doing this, how exciting it would be to do that background in say browns, beiges, stony colors, and then do this in golds on top or silvers, like a real spider's web. I'll tell you what I could do to help you see that is I could go in really dark on top. So let's get, I think I'm probably in the deepest version of that at the moment. And if I take that, in fact, why don't I just go straight in with black? Got a bit of black here, just so that you can see this stencil, because it is looking gorgeous on here, really lovely. Right, 
So we've got black, black, as opposed, as opposed to, don't worry about this if this makes no sense to you, brown, black, what else have we got? Brown, black, red, black, green, black, blue, black, which are new dye colours I'm developing. Right, there we go. That, oh, and this often happens when you've got a very dirty stencil, is bits of the old paint peel off on it as well. So let's take that off there. Right, so let's go over it now with black. And hopefully that will help you to see how effective this stencil is looking on here. The lighter ones will come up when I over dye because anything, the more white there is, the more opaque it is simply enough and it makes it kick up. That, can you see, I think you can see that one. I haven't stenciled that very well. I think that's probably because I haven't got as much paint on my roller as on the other one. So let's just put a bit more on there. This is going to be gorgeous. You see how many I'm going to have to do? 16 minutes. It's difficult to get enough in to show you, really. That looks a better stenciling. I think my roller, your roller just gets inked up as you go along. First run through, that didn't have a lot on, but it has now. That's better. That's better. Isn't that delicious? Can you see? Can you see? I always think you can't, and then when I watch the video afterwards, I think, yes, of course they can see. That lovely spider's web on there. So let's... Let's just print that extra off. And you don't have to, when you either when you're stenciling or when you're taking extra off, you don't have to do it all in one big blob. You can use your hands and fill spaces. So I'm taking this one off in strips and blobs to fill this piece of This is deli paper. So this will make another nice collage element for me. I think these days, really, you know, I mean, textiles are my first love. Um, and I still do love them. But I think increasingly I work with paper and things. I think I'm probably the thing that would would, would describe me best would be to say um, a collage artist. I make materials and I collage. Um, so you can see, perhaps you can see with the deli paper, you can see through. This is one of the joys of it. If I put that over there, you can see the pattern coming up from underneath. This is what makes it so interesting for collage. So let's let those dry off a bit. They're very sticky now. Um, and let's get some more paper and let's try a different stencil so i'm looking for one i fancy as oh i've got to try this it's very fine but i'm hoping this is going to be gorgeous this one's called dandelion i think it's one of the americana ones and i just love the patterning on this so i'm going to start light this time because that's what's on my palette so we'll start light as oh we'll start light oh i say <laughs> that is delicious i slipped which is why i stopped See if I can keep it still this time. I know I'm going to like this. That is <laughs> that is too nice. I might as well get reordering that straight away. I think I think that's going to be very popular. What a cracking little stencil that is! I have to do a video on making your own stencils as well because it's it's not hard. It's just practice and patience while you get used to the tools. That piece I did there is actually a very good example of the fact that you don't have to use the whole stencil. Um, you can you can use elements of it. This is delicious, really delicious. I love these stencils. I've got a few that go round in circles. I find that, which is strange because I don't really like circles normally. All my circular jelly plates, I've chopped the edges off to make them into, square, into rectangles again. Um, but a circular pattern overlay like this, I find very exciting to work with. So this time, we're going to work and you can see I'm just working fast, fast and furious. I'm not worrying too much. I'm getting them slapped down. I'm going to now darken this. So we'll put darker paint back on. 10 minutes maybe, five minutes. Oh, another woof from Milo there. Enjoying, um, enjoy, enjoying a bit of football. He's a lovely, lovely puppy. My goodness, is he a, <laughs> is he a handful? His grandfather, for those that remember Heartbeat, and green grasses dog um green grasses green grasses dog um alfred and if you do remember it you'd never forget him get ready for this milo is alfred's grandson unbelievably so it's no wonder he's a bit of a naughty dog because alfred was a bit of a naughty dog so he has he has some good ancestry there i'm not sure what else has gone into him because he's got huge paws and i suspect he's going to be rather bigger than a normal bedlington whippet cross um but they probably may vary in size as well i don't really know so 
but he is adorable he is adorable but a real handful isn't that so pretty you know i'm building it up into beautiful layers of pattern here you know i could stop there and leave some bits some bits with less on not really in my nature that I do have a bit of a habit let's try leaving it with a bit of a for completely forgotten with a bit of blank space in there maybe we could put something else into those i know what we could put into those i just thought we could put into those let's i've completely forgotten with this one to do any negative prints and i do think the negatives will be lovely so what i could do actually is to show you something um so you can do i knew that was going to be nice delicious negative print so you can do using the stencils materials like this which can be very effective so you do positive and then you turn it over and you can negative and then and you know <laughs> you can if you want to put the hole in the negative in there or you can just do a bad print like me and then we do a positive as ever with me this isn't very well lined up um regular pattern making i love it I'm so, so bad at it so i'm bad at doing anything that's regular i'm very good at being exceptionally random so i'm going to just we'll just finish off that so you can see how that looks because this always looks a bit unhopeful when you start it but i think makes some really nice materials and we'll just print that bit off there okay so you can see I could do quite large pieces of that and work into that. That has a very quilty look to it. Um, and in this one, I've seen here a little um, feather stencil, a little tiny one, which is rather sweet. So why don't we put that feather, and why don't I add some, um, some glimmering paint into there? What could I add? Let's add something that will tone it let's take let's put silver in and see how that looks again this may not show overly much at this point but it certainly will when i over dye so i'm adding silver and white into that mix all these are water-based paints so you can mix them together to your heart's content and have a lot of fun with them and then i'm just going to stencil in very badly there a very messy feather now what I've done is gone on the wrongs I've got that dirty both sides now when this happens and it will happen to you hey don't worry it is not the end of the world it is only a stencil and it's annoying because that was on a really nice piece but never mind the world will not end let's get another piece of paper I'm just going to block that off because that is really wet that will help for starters all that was always do this i'm mixing the paints i've got some really nice little feather off prints from that i'm mixing the paints with my rollers which means i've got far too much on my roller which makes it very difficult for me to actually spend something so let's roll some of that off that's some of that spare off it and see if i can do a bit better this time i know it's possible because i've used this stencil before and it's looked lovely that's better i'll tell you what else i could have got out to go in these gaps is of course i've got the beautiful feather wooden block now i kind of wish i'd done that now but never mind we'll see how that one looks when i'm trying to get a nice sort of balance of them moving around here yes i think that's nice so i'm going to put that one to one side 23 minutes i'll start one more off and then we'll move on to another video can i just about yes come on i'll start one more off we'll start one more off let's use Oh, let's use these bad boys. Oh, there again, there's those bad boys. Oh, it's difficult. Right, I'll use these ammonites this time. Let's use those. Let's do this on Delhi this time. Let's see. You can see as it lies on here how see-through it is. So I'm going to start with what's on my roller, which is this silver, silvery paint mix. And we'll wallop that over. And that's going to give us some lovely patterns of ammonites. And again, you know, there are certain shapes. I actually think this is called Nautilus. It throws us whenever we get an order for this one because we're looking under A for ammonites and it's under N for Nautilus. Um, there are certain shapes that I like. And I'm afraid in the shop you get the things I like. It's always been my policy that I'll sell you what I use and that won't change. So you get the ones I like. 
But I like these, so I have several versions of Ammonite. You know, for starters, I have this one in small and large. And I also have it in, um, I have a single one in a clarity one, which I could then use. But that's really nice, like that. So let's add another layer. Let's try and make a layer. Hmm, I'm trying to change this so that the colour's a bit different. Let's just block that, block that off. I think I'm going to run out of time any second now. So I will just let the camera play out until it does. And then I will finish this on another video and we'll just see if we can get a few more up for you to see. Um, so I'll carry on with this one until it does run out of me. But I'd like to put a layer of, I'll tell you what would look nice, is let's put some shimmer white in the black. And you know what that's going to give us, don't you? Is shimmering grey. And I've just remembered this isn't even open yet. So that is going to take too long. So I will just put white in the grey. And we'll have grey grey instead of shimmering grey. Just because it's quicker. Right, well, that's actually going to look pink and grey. I decorated a lot of rooms in pink and grey when I was younger. One of my favourite colour combinations. Okay, so let's put a layer of grey ones on here. And then I'm thinking that nice dandelion clock could wallop. Oh, that is gorgeous. How lovely is, is that combination? Oh, I'm doing well here. 26 minutes. That is so pretty. Let's, um, let's just finish that. Fill the gaps. Again, I'm aiming the stencil so that I can see plenty of white.